so uh, looking forward to this session, uh, Asia has been very much on the radar as far as international expansion has been ex uh, is concerned. And uh, we thought, you know, who better to have on as the interviewee than somebody from Alibaba. Uh, so I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, Sherry, so um, US brands, uh, how, how do you see US brands leveraging their uh, leveraging marketplaces and their own dot com presence to expand internationally. Yeah, that's a you know very good question. You know, first is I wish I have a great hobby. You know, like when I, you know what I mean. It's just amazing. You know, compared with his, you know, probably my hobby is very boring. But you know, when we talk about marketplace, I hope is I can share some information you know with you guys, which is helpful. Uh, obviously, you know, in U.S., uh, we know the importance of the marketplace. We have some large marketplace players here as well. However, uh, in Asian Pacific, you know, for instance, in Japan, there's Rakata. In China, you know, there's Alibaba. And uh, marketplace is so important, you know, in those regions. When we actually, you know, look at, uh, for instance, you know, I mean, the Chinese uh, market, I just want to show you, you know, briefly on that. Okay, you know, so this, oh, okay, yeah, now we got it, you know what I mean? Maybe it's a uh, last uh, slide, yes. Uh -huh. uh, the retail marketplace in China, we can see that uh, marketplace, you know, has 90% of the e-commerce share, which is truly amazing. For Chinese consumers, they're very much getting used to, you know, buy stuff from the marketplace instead of the individual dot com, you know, places. And then when we look at, you know, the whole marketplace as a landscape, uh, obviously TMO is the largest, you know, player in there. We have over 60%, you know, of that. Um, plus the TMO Global and other players, you know, we have in our family, we dominate about 80% market share, you know, in China in general. So essentially, people really get used to they buy things, you know, from the marketplace instead of, you know, from the individual because they can compare the products, compare price, and also find the best seller, you know, they want to buy these things from the Chinese, you know, I mean, uh, you know, like TMO, you know, I mean, TMO Global, those different places. And for any kind of a U.S. merchants, you know, if they are kind of ignoring, you know, this, it will be, you know, potentially very damaging, you know what I mean, uh, to prevent them to be more successful. And that is why you guys probably have heard about a month ago, a few uh, weeks ago, uh, Amazon also opened a store on TMO, you know, as well, because the share, you know, I mean, the traffic size and the market, you know what I mean, share we have over there. And essentially, when a U.S. merchant try to fully utilize, you know, their marketplace, and also their dot com, social media, mobile, all these things, you know, together, then they will be more successful inside, you know, the global market, especially inside the Chinese market. Later on, I probably will talk a little bit more about why, you know, what's the reason, you know, behind of this. But uh, ignoring, you know, marketplace is not, you know, a very, you know, I mean, smart strategy to enter in there, especially for the at the beginning, you know, stage. And also in China, there is another important factor in there. In order to create your own .com, you will need your local business registration. You need an ICP license. All these things could take you know much longer time to establish in China. So for fast you know strategy, opening a store you know on the TMO you know I mean global marketplace, it's a very fast way to go in there. One great example is Costco. They have been studying Chinese market for over ten years. And what they have chosen to get into that market is opening a TMO Global store. The reason is it is very fast, very easy. They don't need any you know, business license in there. They don't even need to register any of their brands in there. Today, their sales volume is huge you know, in China. They already successfully advertise you know, for their own brand, Kirkland, and the most important promoted Costco brand. Imagine today, if Costco decided they're going to open a retail store in China, it would become a much easier task for them to move forward. So essentially, I hope is that by this introduction, we can really help you to understand more about Chinese market and the important 
of the marketplace model in that market together. Thanks so much. Very super, okay. super helpful. Uh, <clears throat> it's it's also remarkable because uh, you know globally we are seeing that brands are moving away from the dependency of marketplaces and mm -hmm. creating their own dot coms. Um, and generally speaking, of course there are exceptions, but generally mm -hmm. speaking, uh, when it comes to when it comes to choosing a consumer shopping on a marketplace mm -hmm. versus consumer shopping on a dot com, consumers may have a genuine or a perceived uh, apprehension about mm -hmm. authenticity. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And especially in, in, in less developed countries or, or non-US countries. Uh, and that's the reason why we also at, at SP Commerce, you know, that's why we can run uh, Adidas and Levi's and Toshiba and mm -hmm. all the dot-com sites. And trust being a very big factor which brings consumers to those dot-com sites. Mm -hmm. But what's really peculiar is that uh, that same trust factor has been very successfully established with, uh, with the marketplace which is mm -hmm. fundamentally opposed to what I was just talking yeah. about. So, uh, so I think the coexistence of dot-com and marketplace uh, is, is always possible, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of leads me to, to the next question, uh, that how, how can brands uh, you know, balance the trade-off uh, between the revenue on marketplaces mm -hmm. versus their own dot-com site? Because five, 10 years ago, there used to be this, how do we, figure out the trade-off between retail mm -hmm. and online. Today, it's how do we figure out what are we giving away and what are we getting between marketplace and dot-com. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. That's a very natural extension to the first question, how to balance it out. Especially, you know, even when we look at China, we say it's a huge market, you know, when marketplace is dominant. Uh, still, you know, I mean, people lots of times are wondering, uh, how they're going to balance, you know, the dot com, you know, existence, and the most important thing is the full customer experience, you know, essentially. Uh, to be frank, I think is which marketplace, you know, we're talking about, you know, here. Um, for certain marketplaces, I will say, for certain models, yes, you will sell for your things, you know, you will have an extra distribution channel. Uh, however, you know, essentially, you know, the feeling is you lose a connection with the customer. You cannot control your brand image. You cannot control the customer experience. That is why in Alibaba, we created a model which is very different than the other marketplace model per se. First, we stand, you know, I mean, uh, very strongly behind any brand, you know, any kind of retailer, we let them enter into our marketplace. So essentially, we are guaranteed, you know, 100% behind the real products, you know, anything on our platform. If we find anyone which is selling, you know, I mean, not in a real product or they don't have the authorization and the brand complained to us, we definitely were, you know, I mean, take actions against those, you know, I mean, sellers to protect the brand. The second thing is uh, we actually created a place for the brand and for the retailer to market their own, you know, image in there their own uh, customer service, you know, all the customer data as well. So essentially, they have the control to say how I want to interact with our, you know, I mean, customer, how I want to present my stores, how I want, you know, I mean, to communicate, you know, with my customers, you know, as well. They might do it, you know, through some service provider, which is very familiar with Chinese consumer, now knows how to do it in the right way. But essentially, you know, they will have the control, you know, how they want to store, you know, to look like. Um, that is why I think we have some very high brand like Burberry, so, you know, I mean, uh, they are really selling their products very successfully in China. In US side, you know, we have, you know, I mean, Costco there, uh, Juicy Couture, you know, we have GNC, you know, has multiple stores, you know, with us, in order, you know, to market, you know, different products in there. So essentially, you know, the whole TMO and the TMO Global become really the largest marketing billboard in Asian Pacific to really, you know, help the customer to see what is the latest trend in the world. They should buy certain things. What is a brand they really love? How they can create their own identity, you know, through this marketplace. And then essentially, you know, they shop there. So we provided basically the one-stop, you know, service for our, you know, store owners to be successful. 
we have no, you know, for instance, intention in this case, you know, to push our brand, you know, to really try to, uh, you know, I mean, to connect with those consumers. Instead, we want our store owners, we want the brand owners to be more successful. Um, so I think, you know, I mean, when anyone is looking into our marketplace in different country, different culture, different places, they really need to look at it, you know, more holistic, you know, to make sure, you know, I mean, you don't actually sacrifice, you know, any kind of a consumer experience or your brand image and choose the right strategy, you know, to go in there instead of feeling, uh, you know, one way or the other marketplace is, uh, for instance, you know, I mean, has no customer experience or the other way, you know, want. Yeah. Very interesting. So, so what I can take away from that is uh, that unlike you know, other global marketplaces. Mm -hmm. On Tmall, you allow the brand to to choose the way to display its brand identity mm -hmm. and com take complete control over that for most of the part, yes. uh, the mm -hmm. look and feel. Uh, also, you mentioned, uh, you know, earlier when we were having a chat, you mentioned that you also provide uh, uh, analytics and you also mm -hmm. let the brand know what is the click to a click to conversion, the path uh -huh. to purchase, which I which I think is is super interesting because that is the one trade off that a brand would typically do mm -hmm. when they go to a marketplace and they don't understand the consumer yes, exactly. journey. Yes, yeah. uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Very very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, th this part is it, it is definitely something um, I wouldn't say unique to Alibaba, but it is something we try to strive into. Uh, Jack, you know, our founder, you know, and the chairman recently mentioned uh, we actually want to change from an IT company to a DT company, data technology, uh, because literally we have probably the largest data, you know, in the whole world because of the, of course, the population and the consumer base, you know, in China. So essentially, we know lots of things, you know, about our uh, customer and their purchasing behavior as well. Not to mention, you know, Alipay essentially uh, is owned, you know, by Alibaba as well. So we know, you know, how the customer, you know, where they come from, how they shop, you know, all these kind of things. And once anyone sign up with us, opening a store, they own the data, we provide a lot of data for them to do analysis, you know, to really see, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, Prem mentioned, you know, the, where they, they come from, you know, I mean, and uh, what they're doing, you know, in the site, how they convert, and where they're going, you know, after the purchasing, you know, behavior, of course, along where they are, you know, demographic information, you know, they're chatting, you know, all these kind of, you know, customer information. Um, that is why, you know, for instance, for Costco, you know, probably by looking at the large amount of data they have with us, they can easily see not only the products, you know, I mean, the customer interested, but also where those customers actually located, you know. If they want to start opening a few, you know, local store, retail stores in China, they probably have the best data, you know, now to say, hey, this is definitely, you know, the saturated place for us to open a new store. Very interesting. So, thanks for that. The, how do you see, uh, how do you see trends and consumer behavior uh, such as omnichannel and mobile, mm -hmm. how, do, do you see that there's an impact on the marketplace's GMV mm -hmm. with that? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, that impact actually is uh, more and more obvious uh, because a connected, you know, consumers actually it's a very mm -hmm. uh, powerful and a resource, you know, I mean resourceful, you know, consumers. For those, you know, customers, they have access to new technology and uh, lots of new way, you know, to really find a way to help them shopping, no matter it's in-store, you know, display, or the, on you know, the online retailers, you know, own.com, or marketplace, social media, and uh, blogging, you know, all those kind of new things, mobile, you know, devices as well. So they can get vast majority of the data, you know, today that anyone in the past so essentially, I think it enabled those customers to purchase something in the past they cannot buy. Either they're not available in the local stores, you know, I mean, purely you don't have it, or sometimes because of distribution, it might not be available in this particular, you know, store, you know, I mean, close to this, you know, consumer itself. Uh, that's why recently I read a study from Deloitte, you know, they actually have certain data to prove with the omni channels, there's more purchase and a more frequent purchase, you know, for the consumers. 
And also, it drives more brand awareness, loyalty, all these great things, you know, essentially to help, you know, the e-commerce, you know, together. And I think in Chinese market is probably, you know, more obvious. Uh, the reason is, uh, you know, in China, the brick model was not very uh, advanced, you know, like developed countries. So that's why, you know, I mean, the different kind of alternative channel become much more, you know, I mean, available for those customers. In China, we have over 600 million uh, online population, and more than half of them, you know, shopping online. And also, China has the largest mobile internet users with over 500 million users. And imagine, you know, with those great force, you know, and how they can help e-commerce, you know, moving forward. Not to mention, you know, social media become much more, you know, dominant. And when we look at, you know, those consumers, they are very different, you know, than the Western, you know, shoppers, like uh, how I have been shopping, you know, in U.S. First, you know, we have talked about, you know, shopping is a lifestyle, you know, for, uh, for the, you know, I mean, for the customer. It's, uh, it, it's some way they use it, you know, to pass time. And also, they lead the whole world in the mobile shopping, you know, as well. And they definitely want, you know, authentic, you know, real products. Um, they rely very heavily on social media, they blog, you know, they share their experience, you know what I mean, and uh, they try to really, you know what I mean, lots of times I would say it's brag, you know, their experience, you know, with, you know, the surrounding, you know, people. Essentially, they create the trends. They want to be the trend setter to really move forward in that. Uh, I actually want to share a video we recently created, you know, with uh, you guys here to really show how the real Chinese consumers are looking into the Omino channel, you know, shopping in the China.整个中国也好就是国外也好就是这种网络购物的这种诚信度吧这种可靠度就是越来越有信心的关系有时候买的东西比较多的时候有可能天天都会收到邮包真的会这样我记得我最多的一次是有一次是一次性拿了八个也不
Yeah, I know, especially when they're talking about, you know, before they go to sleep, that's an activity. And people really, you know, get together in China. Uh, you know, I mean, treat shopping as, uh, uh, you know, almost like uh, their entertainment. You know, I mean, why I go to a restaurant uh, before, you know, I mean, the meal is, uh, you know, coming, everyone pull out their phone, you know, essentially. You know, they go through, you know, like, for instance, what's a new product, you know, on TMO, TMO Global, uh, what is uh, the, you know, the new purse, you know, they want to buy. So essentially, it's really a social event, you know, for them. And I think that's a very big difference, you know, between uh, probably the Chinese consumer versus, you know, U.S. people. Actually, my colleague here, you know, share the same, you know, thing with me. It's like, a, uh, she sees so much, you know, people in China love, you know, how much they love shopping. When people here are probably more, uh, you know, spend more time outdoor activity, you know, things like that, you know, I mean, not to judge, you know, either way is wrong, you know, I mean, right or wrong. But that's, uh, that's, uh, that's really something, uh, you know, very unique in China. That's also, you know, shows why, uh, you know, for instance, in last 11-11, you know, I mean, 2014, in 24 hours, you know, the GMV number is over 9.3 billion, you know, I mean, uh, in our, you know, marketplace, you know, because uh, it just shows, you know, I mean, uh, it is a, you know, huge market with lots of purchasing power and lots of demand, you know, for the foreign brand, especially U.S. brand here. So yeah. 9.3 billion sounds uh, extremely tempting to get a piece of the pie of, um, <laughs> in China. So on, as I, I think we have time for one last question, uh, what would you advise uh, merchants and brands and retailers? Uh, what do they need to look out for? Uh, how do they assess uh, whether they should be entering China or not? Yes, you know, I mean, um, I, I, I lived here, you know, for over 20 years. So obviously I understand U.S. commerce, you know, e-commerce very well. Uh, both Pranay and I, you know, spend a lot, the majority of our career in e-commerce here. Uh, you know, and also, you know, I understand Chinese culture, Chinese e-commerce very well also. And I would never blindly, you know, advise anyone to say, hey, it's a huge market, you should go. You know what I mean? Uh, because uh, uh, from my view is everyone who is considering that market should, you know, think about it just like uh, when you want to enter any other market from the global strategy, from your long-term strategy. Is international expansion fit into that strategy? Is China, you know, really fit in that, you know, as well? And also, you know, how to really enter into that market? Should I just, you know, I mean, go in there because, you know, for instance, I have two guys, you know, speak Chinese, you know, now great, you know, they're going to open the store and run it, you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you know, like any other market, it's complicated, you know, uh, knowing the language, you know, knowing translating doesn't mean, you know, you're going to be successful, you know, in that market. We have seen lots of, uh, you know, examples from some rather large players uh, uh, that have not been very successful in that market. So our, you know, recommendation is always, you know, I mean, uh, work with us, you know, because we want to be your partners, you know, in the situation. No matter, you know, eventually if you choose, you know, let's say, TMO, TMO Global, as one of your, you know, I mean, entering st strategy, we will give you, you know, I mean, the real picture in that market, how to make you, you know, really successful. For instance, you know, that is why uh, we actually created a new model called TMO Global uh, last February. The reason is after I talked to many foreign merchants, we found out even with a TMO model, it's still too much, you know, too heavy for some merchants and brands to enter in there. You know, I mean, registering, you know, their company, their brand, opening a, uh, you know, I mean, a Chinese bank account that have a warehouse there, you know, to store the products might be, you know, too much. With the TMO Global, we removed all those barriers in there. We created bonded warehouse with Chinese, you know, government together as well. Because in this way, for the foreign merchants, you actually don't have to pay value-added tax anymore. Uh, the customer only need to pay parcel tax when they buy certain things. And essentially, you know, we listen to you. We try to provide, you know, one-stop service, you know, for you together. We also created almost a new, you know, I mean, industry in China called service provider or TMO provider. We call it a TP in that case because they worked with us in the last years. They really knows how to work with us, how to operate a store efficiently, you know, I mean, in this uh, market, how to really, you know, work with us together on different kind of marketing promotion channels. So essentially, you know, I, I think he is be flexible and also be patient 
to really you know, work together as a partner are the most important entering strategy. Essentially, you know what I mean? I think just like uh, uh, you know, with any other market, you, you need a way, you need a strategy, you need a tactic to really see how I'm going to grow you know, in the first three months, six months, essentially you know, to really create a brand image, you know what I mean, a store image in the China connected you know, with the consumer together are the most important things. Very interesting. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. We've got time for a couple questions uh, for Pernay and Sherry. Yep, right up here. I'll bring the mic over to you. And we've also got a mic in the back. Question for, for Sherry. Um, a couple of small startup internet companies have uh, recently you know, asked me, they, they do have a strategy for, they know the growth of potential and opportunities for China and, and Tmall. And, want to gear up, especially for Singles Day, what would your advice be for smaller internet companies mm -hmm. to be successful on Tmall, you know, to, for them to get, you know, the optimal visibility and also, you know, what's the lead time of integration? So um, I, I clearly, clearly agree with you, you know, the Burberries and the Pumas of the world, how successful they've been. How about the smaller startup companies? Yeah, I, I think, you know, for smaller company, uh, to be frank, you know, the challenge sometimes could be, you know, bigger. Uh, there's a few reasons. One is uh, uh, naturally the marketing, you know, spending. The second thing is the brand, you know, awareness in China. However, I, I think, you know, I mean, lots of time it depends on uh, really, you know, I mean, the smaller companies, you know, determination and uh, the way they want to enter because we do, you know, work with uh, some very small, you know, I mean, even startup, you know, brand, you know, in U.S. Uh, recently, you know, we're working with, uh, you know, a, a company called Snapfit. You know, I mean, they haven't even launched in U.S. yet. You know, uh, they are, you know, they're going to, you know, manufacture uh, fiber drink, health, you know, I mean, related, you know, products, and they pitched, you know, their whole marketing plan, you know, into China, and we are really impressed, you know, by their plan and also their determination. So we essentially decided we're going to work with them, even though they are a smaller, you know, players. So I think it's case by case. That's why we talk to, you know, lots of different, you know, companies, you know, on a daily basis, no matter how big they are or small they are. You know, I mean, I think goes back to the last question. You know, we have talked about is, uh, does a comp, you know, is a company ready, you know, to go in there? Do you, are they, you know, determined, you know, or committed, you know, to enter into that market? Because essentially, they need to work with us, you know, together to make it, you know, successful. And, you know, one thing we don't want people to think about or misunderstanding is, okay, opening a store on TMO, TMO Global, uh, because we have 80% of market share, it means they're automatically going to be successful. That's not going to be the case. It's a very uh, challenging market, you know, in China with so many different brands. Just TMO Global alone, we have already have over 50, uh, 5,400, you know, brands on there. So how to really make your brand, you know, stand up, you know what I mean, is going to be a tough, you know, task for all of us to work together. Just to add to that, I mean, you know, for, for smaller startups, it would, it would obviously be a challenge, like Sherry mentioned, because, you know, there's not enough search terms or there's not mm -hmm. enough marketing volume, there's not enough demand. Uh, but a lot of it would also come back to what is a product strategy and how, you know, how yeah. your product mm -hmm. is differentiated from the others. So, uh, you know, if you have a product that is, you know, that's like a Kickstarter winner or it's, a, mm -hmm. you know, it's doing really well or it has a sneak, then like Sherry mentioned, uh, you know, as enablers, it's, it's, it's their job to make sure that they put the best products out for the consumer. So agnostic of whether it's a big brand or it's a small brand, yeah. if, mm -hmm. there's, if there's meaning in the, in the product, then, you know, marketplaces like theirs or even, even full service uh, providers like us uh, would you know would go all out to to market that to the consumer yeah. mm -hmm. cool other questions yeah uh, two things I would have expected to see on this list would be um, percentage of COD customers uh, and also shipping speeds same and next day mm -hmm. can you talk a bit about how those two influence that market share that you mm -hmm. showed on the previous slide yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I think, you know, first is uh, domestically in China, you know, the logistic, you know, I mean, service, uh, 
uh, it, it's really great with so many, you know, different, you know, I mean, logistics service companies. Uh, I think uh, Chinese consumers sometimes probably a little bit spoiled, you know, by that already because uh, when I was living in Shanghai, for instance, I buy majority of my grocery online, you know, obviously. And uh, most of the time, if I make an order 11 o'clock, you know, at night in the morning, you know, the, the, the stuff will be delivered, you know, already. But, you know, at the same time, you know, with the international shipping, people do understand, you know, I mean, it will take, you know, longer time. I think essentially is about uh, the right expectation and information to the customers. Uh, for instance, if we have some, you know, very successful, you know, I mean, U.S. merchants, which are selling stuff, you know, from uh, U.S., you know, to China. What happens is, uh, you know, I mean, from time to time, you know, the shipping can be, you know, as long as, you know, let's say two weeks. On average, you know, it's like one week. During this time, the first thing is the customer knows these products are shipped, you know, from outside China. So they're authentic, they're real. No one probably tampered, you know, with those things. You know, I mean, let's say from, uh, from you know, I mean, LA, you know, in that case. The second thing is uh, for these merchants or for these logistic, you know, service, we want to make sure is when the goods, you know, when the order is made, you know, there is a message, you know, sent over to the customer, you know, I mean, at that point of time. When, you know, the goods, let's say, moved out from the LA, you know, warehouse, there's another message. So essentially, the customer will feel like is, okay, I know where it is. I know why it takes a little bit longer time. Uh, for most of our, you know, international shippings, our customer actually rarely have any complaint. There's a return rate is very, very low, you know, in that case. Uh, that's, you know, I mean, that is very important for the whole customer experience in there. That is also why Alibaba, you know, invested a lot, you know, into logistics, you know, for the last few years. We have our own smart logistic company called Cainiao. And they are working with many different, you know, I mean, uh, partners, you know, around the world to make sure, you know, we provide, you know, the best, you know, I mean, shipping experience and also provide, you know, the, uh, you know, most cost effective ways, you know, for the merchants, you know, to ship the goods, you know, as well. If it's a large, you know, bulky products like formulas or diapers, you know, I mean, it might be, you know, I mean, a, a low, you know, I mean, consolidated model in that case. But, you know, for expensive jewelry, you know, let's say diamond, you know, then we probably want the security is the most important thing, you know, at that point of time. But, the, you know, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Other questions? Any other? All right, great. Sherry Pernay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you.